Mm, the room your character is in, uh, obviously, is very dark and, and, and tight and claustrophobic. And I was wondering, um, when you shot these scenes, how many people were actually with you in that room while filming? Um, well, we shot in two different locations. We shot the first two weeks in a in an actual house where you see like the rest of the story play out. Um, and in that closet, it was it was a practical closet that they had opened up the back room um, so that other people, but, like the camera and everything could get in there. Um, but then for the final two weeks, they built out in a sound stage, they built uh, like a false closet for us to shoot in. Yeah. Um, so I was the only one that was in that closet, but they would just remove certain walls or remove whatever part they needed to, to like get the shot. But um, for the most part, I mean, especially in the final two weeks, it was just me in the closet alone doing the scenes. Like I didn't even have the, the, the little girl that I was shooting with was not there. It was like, no, there was like nothing else was like, I was just having to really use my imagination to, to take the scene where it needed to go. All right, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and what about, because um, obviously throughout the most scenes in the movie, we get to see your character, uh, Jessica, trying to figure out a way out of the room. And I was wondering if that uh, did add some extra pressure on you, you know, uh, because, you know, uh, it, it really was up to you in uh, throughout so many scenes to bring them alive through your acting and emotions. Um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a very emotionally challenging movie, um, especially, like I was saying, because like so much of it depended on me creating these imaginary circumstances. Um, uh, because after we left the, the house and we were just shooting, like we, we didn't have like the practical house anymore. So yeah. most, most of the other actors were no longer there. And I was just having to like, you know, if I hear the, someone going up the stairs or if I hear somebody outside, I'm just like imagining what it would be like. <laughs> um, <laughs> so just really, I think it was um, a, a wonderful challenge as an actor. Um, but then at the same time, like it was, it was amazing getting to work with Vincent Gallo and like the scenes where I actually get to like interact with someone else then felt like even yeah. more of a gift because then it, like, it, like being able to actually play with someone and have, have those interactions elevates my performance, I think. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I, it was definitely very interesting to be able to experience such a stark contrast. All right, and uh, Rainy, uh, if you don't mind, I would like to discuss a few deeper going uh, topics with you that are discussed in the movie because they're there and they kind of inspired questions. Uh, sure. For example, like very early on in the movie, we realized that uh, sometimes like hard decision decisions are absolutely necessary in order to move on in life. For example, Jessica made a decision to break up with Rob uh, in order to get clean and to move on in life. And she must have realized that it's not possible to get clean with Rob because he never really showed real intentions about getting clean himself. And so she knew that she had to do it herself. And he kind of feels betrayed a little bit because he doesn't, he, he, he makes, he makes it clear that he's, he doesn't really like it. And, uh, but again, sometimes hard decisions are necessary, even, even if people around you don't necessarily like that. And I was wondering if that is something you can relate to, if you ever actually had to make like a hard but necessary decision in your life or career in order to move on in a way. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I think we all have had to make difficult decisions like that. And like, like you were saying with Jessica, yeah. for example, it's like such, such an obviously toxic relationship. And um, I think that like something that I was really interested by in the story is so the, she, I, I, like I don't know if she hadn't gone through this difficult experience that she mm -hmm. did um, if she would have actually been able to stay clean and it was like this growing experience for her um, but I guess like on a personal level um, yeah I mean I, I make I make difficult decisions all the time <laughs> I like I I graduated early from high school and moved to New York when I was really young, lived there by myself and then moved out to LA by myself. So I think I've, I've been, I've never really been afraid to like make big changes in my life in order to pursue my career, try to like improve our 
I guess go chase, chase my dreams or whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> uh, and what about, because obviously um, your character says that she doesn't really have a clue how to be a good mother because obviously her relationship to her own mother wasn't the best one. And she even says uh, she hates her. And obviously mm -hmm. she would have received like love. She would have been able to give that back to her own kids. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously she says she never learned how to be a good mom. And obviously when we are kids, um, what we learn as children can go can be so important in our lives as, as adults. And I was wondering if you do remember like something specific that you learned at a very young age that has become um, something very important in your life as an adult artist. Well, I think the most important thing that I learned as a child has just been um, through the love that I give and receive with my siblings. My brother and my sister are my best friends, my favorite people in the world. And I think like knowing yeah. that I can always depend on them and uh, we're so open with each other and we're so connected and having that support system, I think is an, has allowed me to experience life in the way that I have. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think like, of course we all as what the love that we're given or not given as children is so reflective and indicative of the, the way that we live the rest of our lives. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, I definitely am so thankful for, for my brother and my sister and to have that support. And I know that no matter what happens, I can always count on them, you know. Oh, wow. Nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously the fact that, that Jessica was uh, has become clean doesn't mean that she never experiences like a weak moment where she possibly could have a relapse. In fact, we even see in the movie uh, mm -hmm. uh, a moment where she has a weak moment. And the question is, can she resist a bad decision or not? Because going back to her addiction will be a bad decision. And uh, obviously we all may have like a weak moment in our lives for whatever reason. Uh, and, and when we have that, we may have the tendency to make bad decisions ourselves. Um, and I was wondering, whenever you had like a weak moment for whatever reason in your life or in your career, because maybe things didn't exactly go the way you imagined, how did you make sure that you resist bad decisions in a weak moment? Um, I mean, I think that's something that I am working on all the time and uh I uh, my tendency for the majority of my life whenever I'm going through something has been to turn inwards and I'd get embarrassed and I just don't want to rely on anybody else um but yeah. uh I'm learning to try to be less afraid to ask for help when I need it and to especially like you know n now I, I can call my sister with anything all the time she's always there for me but um Oh, wow. and, but even like my best friends and my sister sorry my cats like, <laughs> like <laughs> um, but like even for a long time it was challenging for me to even reach out to my the closest people in my life when something was going on but I think I'm in therapy I think everybody should be in therapy <laughs> like <laughs> that's helpful um but yeah I mean I think being unafraid to ask for help and ask for advice when you feel like you need it and rely on your people that uh whatever your support group is um is immensely helpful absolutely yes absolutely yeah. and then oh <laughs> what do you have there <laughs> cat power i love yeah, exactly so <laughs> and i was wondering because there's also a part of jessica and uh rob this also another character is very interesting it's uh, sammy and at first when you see him you 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 feel that he's gonna be like the real threat and everything, you know? And uh, he says something interesting. He goes like, uh, people who are hoping are desperate. And I was wondering, what would you say is your definition of the form of hope that is represented in the movie in that moment? Um, well, I mean, I don't know if we should necessarily be taking Sammy's advice. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of ways to look at um, to look to look at that idea, and like, sure, you could um, 
you could look at hope as being a form of desperation, but that's so pessimistic. I think like yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think also like, you know, hope is what drives us to do anything and try to achieve anything. If you don't think you can, they wouldn't try. Um yeah. and hope can be wonderful. Um oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the 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 fascinating thing is that uh at first I thought that uh, Sammy would like be like, um, like a straight up bad guy. But there was like one tiny moment where I kind of tried to see him with different eyes. You know, it's like when he says that um, he went back into his addiction because he wanted to escape his own reality. And I was like, how terrible does your life have to be if like going back to your addiction is like the only way that brings you some peace in a way. Totally. I mean, I think that's one of the wonderful things about the story is that like even the villain is not a one-dimensional character and there's mm -hmm. moments where you are able to feel empathetic for this like monstrous human. Um, but of course, you know, pe people, the worst people only act that way because of the way they were treated and it's, you know, generational trauma. Um, so yeah, I think that's, it's wonderful that even for a moment you're able to empathize with like the villain. Um, and as you said, yeah, like relying on terrible habits like drug use as, as a way, as a form of escape is unfortunately tremendously common. Like, and, and just, because, you know, like I said, like everybody should go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, and Rainy, my last question to you would be like, because I absolutely love, you know, this like this tiny little traditional aspect, you know, with the um, apple butter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, kind of reminded me of, you know, when when the grand when you hear like at the end, you hear like that um, the, 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 the grandmother says not just to cut away like the brown sides of it and to eat the rest, you know, that was like. I, I remembered my own grandma telling me that, you know, whenever I saw like an apple with a, with just a tiny little brown piece on there, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna eat that. And my granny was like, ah, just cut it, cut it off and the rest is, will be delicious. However, I was wondering if you have like a similar uh, traditional thing, you know, in your family, you know, uh, if there is like a specific recipe that kind of survived the generations. Um, well, we definitely have a very similar mentality of like not wanting to waste things. Uh, I grew up in, yeah. in Montana when I was a kid, so we grew a lot of our own food. And I live now in California and I have like a garden and a bunch of fruit in my backyard. So um, the that mentality def definitely resonates with me just because I know how difficult it could be to to grow food yeah. um, but actually like very similarly um i have an apple tree in my backyard and my dad was staying with me um oh. for for a couple months over the summer and we collected a bunch of the apples and like made we didn't make up apple butter but made a couple apple pies from scratch so that was really fun my dad's a great cook um so uh i don't know if that's like a family recipe necessarily but it was a family experience yeah <laughs> yeah that counts, that counts. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Seriously, Rainy, I want to thank you so much for sharing your time with us today, for, for talking to us about your movie and, and about the topics in it. And uh, obviously, you have a wonderful day and a happy Halloween. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You too. So good to have you. <laughs>